Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Positive Parenting. On this episode, we'll be talking about social emotional learning. In the school district, we call this SEL. Many times we have acronyms for things that we know we need to do a better job of explaining to our families that we serve. And so today, talking about social emotional learning and just what is that? How does that impact your student in the classroom? What does it look like? And why are we so interested in working with children on their social emotional needs? Dr. Teresa Boyson is joining us today for part of the conversation. Dr. Boyson, tell us your position with the district. Yes. Um, so assistant superintendent over academic achievement. So everything curriculum and assessment. And so social emotional learning fits right in there with that curriculum. Okay, so we oftentimes talk about SEL and the many things that we're doing in our district, not necessarily brand new. This isn't something that has just blossomed and, and we've started, but we, we're making a, a greater attempt and maybe identifying a little bit more what it is that we are doing to help children. Um, why is social emotional learning so important? What is it that we're, we're trying to affect? Right. So social emotional learning, you think about those relationships that they need to build with students. You think about how they respond to different situations and regulating their emotions. So um, just as you said, it's not anything new, but we're really taking a little more targeted um, look at how we systematically help support students with gauging their emotions, responding to others, recognizing other people's emotions, um, so that way they know how to respond in those situations. And looking at all the way from early childhood through 12th grade. Right, so this is uh, a, really a refined look at uh, the emotions that we all have. Um, for many years, you know, it was I'm happy or I'm sad, and that was pretty much the middle of the norm. But we have a lot of things happening in our world today that impact students. Um, we have family situations. Perhaps there's been a, a death in the extended family, or maybe um, there's been another issue at home with mom and dad that's the, the child's having a difficult time processing. Um, and those issues don't just stay at home we often find that, that uh, children bring those to school with them. We say, oh, there's a lot in their backpacks when they come to school each day. And we're not talking necessarily notebooks and pens and paper and, and that type of thing, but they have a lot of emotion that come with them um, every single day. Right, and we've talked um, with our, you're right, they come with lots of different things in their backpack, uh, strategies, but also uh, that baggage, if you will, or just the, the life events that happen with those students. And we call those ACEs, and so a student adverse childhood experiences. And so um, if I'm going through a death in my family, or if a parent has lost a job, all of those things add up. And how students respond to those, those are the skills that we're trying to help students um, know, first of all, that the school is a safe place and there is an adult there, more than one adult, but many adults that care for them and that they're there to talk to them. School counselor, classroom teacher, um, principal, custodian, uh, educational assistant. So all adults in those schools are there to care for them and to listen and support them and to be able to help those students regulate those emotions and recognize how they're feeling. Yeah, you touched on uh, school counselors and oftentimes that's the role we we see them in, but school counselors have a lot on their plate, just like our teachers do as well. So in order to have many trained hands, um, to have those conversations and make sure that those conversations are meaningful with the child is so critically important. It's not just the work of our school counselors. They do in a phenomenal job, an amazing job, um, but they can't do it all. Right. Yeah, so right. All, right. all of those adults. All of the adults in the building. So um, we have curriculum starting in early childhood. We have the Harmony, Sanford Harmony curriculum, deals with the social emotional, recognizing how I'm feeling, being able to express those with words for, for those youngest learners. And then as they move up into middle or elementary, our school counseling curriculum, second step, really helps to refine that information and that's um, system wide. And even in the classrooms then, how the teachers respond, how they group up students, how they pair share and talk back and forth to each other, being that active listener, 
um, just embedded practices throughout um, the building and the school. Um, like you said earlier, it's not something new. Our web transition for our middle school, moving into middle school, that transition process for fifth to sixth, and then we have pro time um, every morning for those students. And moving into high school, again, we have that transition with the Connections program, counselors in all our elementary, middle, and high schools to help support, but then for our staff. And then our staff have worked really hard with some online trainings that they have done. Different buildings have tried those different supports. And that way it's giving language to our adults in the building to help them support the students. Right. And so everybody, all hands on deck, if you will, uh, trying to not only teach the academic uh, portions of our curriculum, but to teach those social emotional components of the curriculum as well. Those things that make us uh, more empathetic if there's something happening to someone else, that it's not just my world that's that matters, but everyone around me and that their world matters as well. And so uh, by putting a focus on this, our, our hope is that students can better identify their own feelings, um, identify those of others, and be responsive then in a way that is uh, impactful and, and meaningful to the community. Because really we're raising citizens, we're raising adults at this point. <laughs> That's right. And really looking at, um, like you said, managing my emotions, responding, and listening to others. So really it is building that social network, that communication skills for our students starting um, with three-year-olds working all the way through 18, 19-year-olds. Right. You mentioned the Harmony program at Early Childhood. That's been in place now for several years. Um, and and some of the others, maybe at the middle, or I'm sorry, at the elementary level, um, we're going to talk with a couple of principals coming up here shortly about their specific programs in their buildings. But can you give us a, a rundown of, of what that looks like or what are some of the other um, things that parents might have heard of? Oh, now I get it. That's what they're doing with that program in social emotional learning. Um, what are some of those that sure. our sc schools are using right now? So in elementary, um, we have second step, like I mentioned earlier, that's our counseling curriculum. And we use that in elementary and into middle school. We have caring school communities, which is part of our English language arts elementary curriculum. And that helps to build some of those um, how to empathy for others, um, what do I do when um, someone's mean to me, or so, a little bit of that social um, media, mm -hmm. and how do I respond to that. We have Move This World, it's an online curriculum that we have four elementaries trying that. Um, Panorama is another one. So we have uh, eight buildings that have a grant in the elementary and so they've tried some, a couple different um, curriculums just to see which one works best and we're looking at that and evaluating that through the end of this year and then into next year because we are in a health study our mm -hmm. health our program review so looking at that information and how can we embed some of this because it follow it falls in our health standards mm -hmm. so all of that um, that work that we're doing and piloting these will culminate with uh, the health study. And we do um, studies of curriculum about every seven years or so that comes around for each curriculum, um, sometimes more, oftentimes not less than seven years because things change over time. And so um, obviously we want to have the, the most up-to-date and best practices in whatever curriculum we're teaching to, to children. So this is time for that review and this is a good opportunity then for us to vet those programs and uh, see what really works for our families. Now some might be thinking, well, I have these conversations with my kids at home. I mean, isn't that good enough? And in many ways, parents are the very first teacher. Um, but we know family structure is different these days with working parents and um, you know just a variety of things that are pulling them uh, different directions. And so it really has come to the school as a, a systemic opportunity to teach in this way. That's right. Um, we, yes, you're right. Um, we do believe that parents are the first teacher. And so how can we help support them? And anything that we do within the, um, in the school system, it's really important that we communicate that with those families. So the families do hear the language that we're using because we know if we, have the, if we use the same language at school to support how they feel when they're, when they're 
frustrated, angry, sad, mad, glad, that if families can use that too, it just helps support that student. And as those students gain those skills, as they grow in age, uh, they are able to um, have those great conversations with mm -hmm. people in the community, with across the all aspects of their life. Now having a middle schooler, actually having two middle schoolers, I know that that's a really difficult time in a child's life. Just a lot of different things happening uh, with friendships and their own body changes and things like that. Um, so things look a little different at the middle school. Then a uh, brief overview of kind of what we're doing at the middle school and then maybe transition that into to what's happening at the high school. Sure, at middle school, again, um, we have the web training and that's at transition from fifth to sixth and we've had that for a, a good long time. And so just continuing to support those students as they make a big transition in their life. And we have the counseling curriculum. We also have social, social skills curriculum and they utilize that second step. But pro time is a big part of middle school and that's a small chunk of time where kids are together that we can teach those social skills um, directly to those students throughout middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth. And then as they transi transition into high school, again we have connections and connections is that eighth to, to ninth um, transition for our kids and then really looking at how we can support those students freshman academy mm -hmm. um, for our freshmen and that keeps that core group of kids together adults that are watching very carefully as they make that transition so students are successful and then our counseling support and then also those classroom supports into that high school. Sure. We've embedded some mental health uh, work as well and some relationships, uh, partnerships that we've established with, with community organizations and such. You want to talk a little bit about um, that and that's a a relatively new development in that um, five years ago we we had relationships with healthcare providers and uh, mental health providers but that seems to be a, a greater focus at this point in time. We do we have great partnerships out in the community and Avera Health um, has really um, stepped up to support any mental health supports we need. We're in um, constant collaboration with them and looking at how they can help support and train our staff and then the state has helped with some grant funding and um, we have someone that's going to speak to that coming mm -hmm. up here about the middle school grants that they have available but also any supports that our counselors would need our counselors have connections with in the community that they, for individual students that they can reach out for counseling um, any type of screenings that they would need and those are all fee based so families feel like there are supports out there no matter what their financial need is. Right well it does take a village to raise our children um, we're all working toward making them productive citizens in society and the social emotional learning that we're doing in our buildings and helping students identify how they're feeling and how that makes them react to, to other situations is so critically important uh, because these are their developmental years and we're we're prepping them for that adulthood and giving them those skills that they can lean on for the rest of their life. So coming up now, we'll hear from a couple of our principals about what social emotional learning looks like in their buildings. Now for the second part of our program today, we're going to be talking to two principals to find out how social emotional learning looks in their buildings. And Mitch Schaefer, you're the principal at Cleveland Elementary. You've been in a couple of different buildings throughout the district. Um, we talked with Dr. Boysen that this isn't necessarily a new effort, but more of a, a focused awareness of what can we do to really help those kids build those, those social skills and identify how they're feeling. So tell us a little bit about um, the program that you have going on over at Cleveland and how long you've been using that and sort of some of the results you're seeing. Sure. So we are piloting a program called Move This World in our classrooms, um, in our kindergarten through fifth grade classrooms. And basically it's a short video clip that the teachers can put on or go through a course that has students identify their emotions through um, things called emojers. Um, there are also some um, emotional ABCs that they can help identify if they're feeling anxious or bored. And we have seen students use those and to help them when they're feeling frustrated angry, very excited mm -hmm. to help them basically solve problems and get through the day in a, in a peaceful way. So this video clip, is this a daily uh, process where it, 
teachers maybe start the day with that or use it as a buffer in between classes or how, how does that work? Typically one to two times a day and one of them will usually involve some breathing where they just, you know, you, you breathe in and exhale and helps students. I think it helps us as adults too. I was just going to say. <laughs> help us with our day when we are feeling stressed. We all know that there are stresses within our days. so. It, it's good for all of us who are using it. Right, so being able to identify, we know um, that children very early on, um, they're still obviously developing their, their um, thoughts and able, the ability to express how they're feeling. Have you seen this become a, a method where kids are identifying, you said a, maybe gosh, this is how I'm feeling, and maybe I didn't know exactly how I was feeling before, but what, what results are you seeing? I think where we see the students uh, using the program, the Move This World program, but in addition to the support and the, um, the support from the classroom teacher, when they're using the same language, and then also the supports we have throughout the rest of our building, whether it's the Tier 2 program, mm -hmm. one of our two counselors who work with the students, or our overall student support team, to help students and when all those are working together that's where you do see the most success. We have to have, yes, the implementation of the program but the support of the adults who are then using everything we're doing within the school whether it's the Move This World program, our Common Boys Town or Well Managed Schools language um, to help kids through their day. If a student is in Tier 2 to receive those social skills, that's when we see everything working together that's where we do see the most success with our students. Sure. So you've been in education how many years? Uh, 19. 19 years. So have you seen this type of uh, direct focus or is this something different um, as, as we said probably always been talking about social emotional learning without having that acronym or that SEL acronym attached to it in some way shape or form but what do you see in your, um, your work throughout those 19 years how things have maybe changed? I'll say within the last seven to ten years, it's really been more of a focus that we've tried to um, put into our schools. But right to have an actual program that's an SEL program that we can use um, does, I think, make a difference and it is helpful for our students. I know people have tried different things in their building, but this does provide uh, a laser focus for us to use. Right, so Move This World is one of those programs at the elementary level. At the middle school, uh, obviously kids are developing, um, it's a difficult time for kids, right? I mean, those middle school years. You mean like years. you're a little crazy maybe? Well, <laughs> maybe, yeah. And so who better to talk about that? <laughs> Sorry, Erica. It's okay. Erica Palladino <laughs> Hazlett is principal over at Whittier Middle School, and uh, you got to love those middle school kids. We do love those middle school kids. Right. And so we know there's so much happening in their their world. They're um, maybe testing the limits a little bit, defining their independence, um, you know, and, and they're continuing to grow, and there's just so much happening in their worlds, in their bodies, in their minds. Um, and, and so social emotional learning um, looks a little different. A video clip might not work with, right. with middle school kids. Maybe it would. Um, but what, what are you guys doing in your building to, to really focus on um, those needs that kids have? No, we have a lot of things going on at one time. Um, one of the probably the most important things to talk about is a grant that we got from the state that focuses on the social emotional learning for our students. Um, it provides us with some staff, it's provided us with some programming, it's provided us with some ability to track data, um, and specifically what it is supposed to do is allow us to identify students that may have a severe emotional disorder or may need a hookup to resources somewhere outside of the school. So that could be housing, it could be um, med management, it could be um, just help in navigating rentals for a family. And so that's one piece of it. And then the other piece is to identify and provide some services um, for counseling. And so that's one piece of it. Um, the other piece really operates throughout the whole building. Um, it's allowed us, like I said, some data tracking software where we can look to see students who are struggling on what we call low levels. So maybe they're disruptive, maybe there's an emotional outburst, but when we can identify those students in patterns, we start to pull them for groups now. And those groups can last anywhere from four to six weeks. Um, we can isolate on some of those skills that they might need to 
to be successful academically because balancing that social emotional learning and academics is really important because we're in school. Right, and that's I think um, something else that's happening is you know the elementary grades. You know, you're you're yes, you're trying to achieve and get to a certain grade, but you can start to see it maybe define itself a little bit more um, by the time kids get to middle school where those outbursts, those behavior issues then result in lower grades and um, that's where we start to see and then we have of course yet high school to consider yep. and credit you know earning credits and right. and getting to graduation so all of these things really come um, into play yeah. and you're prepping prepping these kids yeah. to move on to high school which whoo what well, we said are kind of the turnstile right because we take we receive and we send we're the only the entity that does that is middle sure. school so you're really working with both sides as, as um, closely as possible so we're trying to communicate with elementary principals and we have some ways that we're going to try to improve that as those fifth to sixth graders transition into us from our side and we're also working to transition those students to high school successfully because like you said I mean we know that if kids aren't ready to go to ninth grade and they're not successful in the first semester of ninth grade their chances of not graduating are exponentially higher right. so I'm um, trying to prepare our students, right, both academically and emotionally to go on and also to have them have supports identified already so they don't feel like there isn't something right. supporting them. Waiting for yeah. them, because that can be a scary time, that transition time. You mentioned something about groups. So what does that, those, what does the group look like? I mean, what are you, what might be taught during <laughs> that time? Well, that's, that's a really good question. So we, we pulled our first group and it just ended. Um, we've really tried to identify our sixth graders because there's that first group um, that actually will come in with me since this is my <laughs> first year, right? But also the first year that we have access to a lot of this information. So the group that just finished was a group of students that we see low levelly, um, just struggling to say, okay, in class uh, mm -hmm. just uh, you know isn't great with redirection so we tried to give some skills um, if an adult asks you to do something you should just say okay it allows that adult to back off and then giving them the skills working them through a practice because just talking about it is different than practicing it putting them in situations with their friends inside of that group um, the next group that we've talked about pulling is a group of kids who really struggles when subs are in the room Okay. Um, and mm -hmm. you know that change factor a different adult telling you what to do you're used to this practice and it's become different in one day so how do we help those kids because for the rest of their life right change will occur for them right and so those practice skills yeah. um, how many kids are we working with at a at a time at a time saying? we probably we've kept it like in between in between 8 to 12 okay. just kind of depending and, and our, our the counselor, we call her the CPAM, she's a project manager for okay. this grant, is really the person who's working predominantly with those students. Our other counselors are running groups as well. Um, sure. Lunch groups, attendance groups, all those things. So it kind of spans um, between all of us in the office and how that works. Right, and so those supports are you seeing um, as a result of your, your first group that you met with. Um, it, it might take some time. It was interesting. Um, um, we saw a huge improvement when they were in group and then when group was over, um, we're not sure if they wanted to keep the group going, but we saw their behaviors increase. So one of the things that we might start to talk about is do we fade group instead of just end group? So instead sure. of just being done, maybe we're in a check-in, you know, every once a week, then maybe once every two weeks, once every three weeks. So it isn't like you just lost that support. support yeah. Right, yeah. That and, and all of those little things seem like I mean, it, it seems like a little thing, but yeah. in the life of a middle schooler, yeah, oh, things. change is, yep. is very difficult to handle. Um, what have you, I mean, when you communicate this need to the students that we're going to do this group, are the parents involved in any way, shape, or form, or is this, is this kind of a, you know, just something that meets during the school day? Meets during the school day. Um, you know, we're in pretty constant communication with those parents, generally because those kids are kids that we would see at some point. Now, it doesn't mean that we see them because they're in trouble. It's just that we see them because there's a need to mm -hmm. see them. And because if there's a need to see them, we communicate with that parent. Um, the parents, they don't, they have to have permission, our students have to have permission to take what we call a saber test, which is kind of this preliminary identification piece. Um, so parents are aware that that has occurred mm -hmm. and then they're aware kind of that students could be pulled for group at that point. Right, well, I, this grant um, that came in, is it something 
it's something from the state, you yes. said, yeah. and uh, really focused on that social emotional. Focused on social emotional and then setting students up in connection with resources. Um, and, and when people think about social emotional, I mean, I think that probably the people who provided the grant and who are uh, pieces of hiring people for the grant were surprised at the social emotional need coming out of Whittier. I think we thought that there would be more of a need for connection right mm -hmm. to resources but we have some really phenomenal social workers sure. in our district and district supports that give that um, and then we really backlogged on the the need for counseling services so much so that they've they've hired a counselor specifically mm -hmm. for that for those mm -hmm. students at Whittier mm -hmm. so do you know the intent of of this particular grant I mean this is like a pilot also yeah. it being is it a three-year grant five-year grant. Five -year grant. Yep. grant okay so you'll have those services available and yes. any thought of what things look like in the sixth year or do you don't want to think about that yet? <laughs> you, kind of, you know we only have one year of data really gathered because even though the grant is a five-year grant it really didn't get started about until the middle of last year okay. so our data poll really is only a full year until today or you know about this about time mm -hmm. and so I think we'll have to move through we know people that we think are essential today to the grant that if we didn't have that person this grant couldn't function and then we believe like we have a like we talked about the uh, referral program, how we're able to track and refer students. Like we could probably figure out how we would do that as a school or as district. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't need a grant to do that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's allowed us some training in what we call PBIS, and I'm a big one that I don't like to use acronyms, right? And I don't like to <laughs> buy into one kind of program. But what we've been able to do at Whittier is really incorporate our Whittier way. So you'll hear students, like somebody will do something in the hall and a student will say, that's not the Whittier way. You know, you're not being your best self. And so we have five pieces in that Whittier way that we just really drill into students' heads. But that's a part of our system mm -hmm. that we're able to build because of this grant. Okay, well, so many things going on. Uh, would you say, to both of you, would you say kids have changed over time? society has changed over time, the needs, maybe we've just become um, better at identifying the needs. What would you say? I mean, we're, we're all in this together, um, and these are the kids that we're trying to build up to become great citizens. And so, um, you know, just kind of like if we were talking about bullying, bullying's always been on, this, on the playground. Um, maybe we identify it a little bit different uh, these days. But what would you say about, um, you know, have kids really changed over time or have we just become more aware? I think kids are very much the same. We were visiting earlier about, when we were younger, about <laughs> things that went on and some of the situations are not a lot different than what we see now. Um, kind of a deep question of whether or not society has changed, but I do think we are more aware of uh, students and what's happening in their lives. I do think students um, and kids in general and even adults live through a lot more stress and trauma um, and so we are better at identifying that and putting supports in place for them when we see them struggling with um, the trauma and the stress that they have gone through. Right. Your thoughts? I think we educate a lot more students today than we did mm -hmm. um, years ago and not just because Sioux Falls has grown but because many of the students that we see today probably wouldn't have been in school. Um, they would have been, um, you know, maybe removed by the court system. They maybe would have been in a foster care situation. Parents may not have sent them to school, right, because mm -hmm. they kept them home. So I, I feel like we educate all kids today, where maybe we didn't educate all kids, you know, even when Mitch and I were in school. And I feel like because Sioux Falls has changed so much um, ethnically, culturally, that it's really not the, you don't do things the right way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like we had a right way that we thought we did things and now we have to be very careful about, um, we're dealing with people from all over the world. Right. In Sioux Falls at Whittier alone, there are 39 different languages spoken, right? Wow. So we have to make sure that we're reaching every student how every student needs to be reached. It isn't that they're different, it's that we probably have to be different. Right, yeah, more flexible yeah. and uh, willing to learn, learning Listen. <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> yeah. um, in the process and, and that all makes a, a better setting when yeah. your adults are learning right along yep. um, with the kids. Um, so is the, uh, what more could the district be doing? I mean, there's a lot of different programs out there. We had Dr. Boyson uh, talk a little bit about Panorama and you're using Move This World and you have a grant and there are so many different uh, programs out there 
um, how do you find the right one that you know you put your finger on? Would you say Move This World is working for you guys? It's it's hard to say that that one program is making a difference because we have seen a reduction in our our overall discipline um, district discipline events or incidents. But I think it's in combination of several things that we do within mm -hmm. our in our school day. Again, with our tier two program, with our success coordinator, our counselor, our overall student support team. It's our teachers building those quality relationships and that's where it starts is in the classroom with the student and the classroom teacher with that relationship and, and when that's effective we do see um, students well adjusted to their day and able to handle situations on the playground or in the hallway or the lunchroom uh, much better than if they don't have that connection mm -hmm. it's, so it, it's a lot of things together that we do that do make the difference uh, that does make the difference um, and Whatever we use, whatever the district chooses, a lot of us are using different you know, programs. Mm -hmm. It's the building staying committed to it and implementing it um, along with all the other things that are happening and, and that's where we see um, the most results, the better results for our students. Right, it's that continued focus, everybody on board, yes, buy-in right. so that we right. can make it work mm -hmm. for, for us. And you, you mentioned, Erica, the um, need that you saw come out of those, the the real counseling mm -hmm. needs and such. Um, it seems like, you know, if we had 20 counselors, yeah. we could use 20 more. Yeah. Um, the role of the counselor has changed so much over the years where, you know, there were uh, maybe at, not necessarily at the middle school level, but, you know, you're doing some career exploration yeah. and that kind of thing. And those, still, those things still happen, but there are so many other uh, pieces that, that counselors work with. Um, do you, do you, early in the process, would you say the program is working for you? The grant is working for you? Yeah, remember I hate programs, right? <laughs> so I mean, okay. I hate one program. Um, I, think, I think we would tell you that we've taken that and we've tailored it to what Whittier, what we needed it to be for Whittier. And to do that, you have to talk to all your staff. And that is a continuous process, right? You don't get to just say, hey, we're gonna talk once and then we're gonna leave it at that. What do we think is working? Um, we have bi-monthly groups that meet to determine what's the need that we have today, what are the, some of these procedures that we've set up that we feel like haven't worked, mm -hmm. you know, what do we need to do to be different. So you really see us taking pieces from all sorts of different things. You could talk about Boys Town and when you hear me say you need to say okay to an adult and then mm -hmm. you'd hear us talk about love and logic when we say hey you know, no matter what you do we're going to care about you, right? So we're piecing all these things together because Whittier needs um, a well-balanced approach, right? Just like any school, and it would be different for every school. Um, one of our main focuses always goes back to academics. That's something that kids can control. It's mm -hmm. within their grasp every day, and sometimes how you feel is not within your control every mm -hmm. day. So mm -hmm. we really try to balance those two things out for students, right? We're not only gonna talk about social emotional, we've gotta talk about what are you learning? What are you gonna do in that classroom? And you can really see kids grab on to that, like I can control that today. I know that I have to go to class. And you'll hear them oftentimes saying in the office, Mrs. Pellet, you know, I have to go, I have a test. I have to go, I'm supposed to be learning, right? Which is what we're trying to right. um, really get them to understand that's within your control. Many of these things are not, and we're here to support you mm -hmm. in all areas of that. Yeah, well, it, it seems like that encompassed um, approach where, as you said, not one. Right. And Mitch, you said right. that too, just everything coming together. Um, and what we've learned by use of other programs and what works and what doesn't work. And yeah, I feel like as a parent, I could be benefiting from all of these different things that you, mm -hmm. so your, your children, they must be perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Perhaps you could teach me then. <laughs> I pra practicing the well-managed approach in the Boys Town language at home. And yeah, yes. you do. Right. I did say to Mason once, are you really being your best self? Yeah. And he's like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so. There you go again, Dad, using Boys Town on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, it is your day and, mm -hmm. it, and you maybe see the results and yeah. you kind of incorporate that. And, we laugh and joke about it, but boy, parenting is, it's hard it's today. Hard. Yeah. And you both know that with, with kids as well. And, mm -hmm. and you know, trying to get everybody on the same page or even in the same car at the yeah. same time, <laughs> or, you know, those things are, are just a challenge that our busy world, our yeah. busyness right. really doesn't allow us to stop, maybe step back and say, okay, what do we need as a family? What do mm -hmm. we need as, 
you know, humans who are part of this family unit and just ugh, collectively, I think the world is so busy. I see right. both of you at various <laughs> events for kids yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that where um, the society just sort of requires that today that we take a step back. And yeah. So any final thoughts about um, your program and your, your building and or what you'd like to see for the future of social emotional learning in, in Sioux Falls? Is there, um, would, you, would you tell people we're, we're on the right track? I think we're grateful, you know, for the supports that we've got right. um, for a district that allows us to be creative um, and supports us in, in the endeavors that we, that we try at our building. Right. right. And knowing that there's a little different look at Whittier yeah. than there is at Edison than there yep. is at Patrick Henry and McGovern and who am I forgetting? <laughs> who are you forgetting? Uh, I think you got them all. Sorry <laughs> if I forgot Edison, someone. Whittier but middle McGovern. school, yeah, that's a, that's a challenging time for sure. Right, right. And yeah, I, I, I do believe when we're exploring and trying to implement different programs, you know, we're on the right track because we know the need is there. and connecting everybody in the building to utilize the same approach, same common language. Um, I, yes, I feel we're on the right track. Always more work to do. You know, we always have a new batch of students coming in yeah. the next year that will um, continue to have needs. Um, that's why we're here though. Right, exactly. Well, again, we're all working together and using bits and pieces of various programs to, to create that um, citizen for the future that is uh, empathetic, that can identify their own feelings and, and be aware of the feelings of others and just become uh, that whole self, that whole person that, that can be a great contributor to our community. Thanks for joining us today on Positive Parenting. Mm -hmm.